All right, five minutes after 9 o'clock. It is time for Veterans News. Hank Whittier is not in the studio. Gary Pascal sitting in the captain's seat. Good morning, Gary. How are you doing? Uh, good morning, Larry, and good morning, veterans, and good morning, listeners. It's a beautiful morning, and I'm glad to be here uh, at the studio with Sergeant Curley. Uh, hopefully a little later on in the show, about five minutes from now, um, we'll have somebody from Community Legal calling in. We've got some real good news on some veterans' legal issues and benefits. Uh, so, um, you know, we hope that comes through for you. If not, we'll do something else. But unfortunately right now we do have some casualties to report in the firefighter and the um, law enforcement area. Okay, um, we have Lieutenant Michael P. Miller of the Green Bay Metro Fire Department in Green Bay, Wisconsin, whose date of death was the 20th of June, 2015. Now we have several law enforcement deaths and all of them that I'm going to report this morning have been killed in the line of duty either by gunfire or um, other means. And the first is Sheriff Lanson O'Connor of the Montgomery Sheriff's Office in Georgia. His end of watch was Tuesday, June the 16th of 2015. And then we have police officer Sonny Kim of the Cincinnati Police Department in Cincinnati, Ohio. His watch ended on June the 19th, 2015. We have police officer Rick Silva of the Chalice Police Department in the state of Washington. His end of watch was Thursday, June the 18th, 2015. And we have police officer Daryl Holloway of the New Orleans Police Department in New Orleans, Louisiana, whose end of watch was June 20th, 2015. And I would also like to take just a few seconds here to mention um, that our thoughts and prayers also go out to the shooting victims of, of the church in Charleston last week, um, and I had seen on the news this morning that they did held, hold their Wednesday Bible study again last night. Uh, you know, God bless them, and our prayers and thoughts are, are with all these folks and um, with all the firefighters and the police that lost their lives. All right, we'll be right back. Once again, uh, this is uh, Curly of VFW uh, um, Commander. I, I'd like for you to know that usually they ask me, is there anybody else that I need to mention for the review, but they didn't. So this time I'd like to announce the fact that we just lost one, two of our VFW members. One of them is named Reverend Johnny Bernard. He's a, he was a member of the VFW Post 7193, and also Rufus Fuse, who was also a member of the VFW Post 7193, and also a member of the Charles S. Schmidt Military Order of Purple Heart, Chapter 466. So those two people also remembered in our prayers, and the families are asked to continue to support us as we try to do what we need to do, and, uh, and let them know that we, we, they, they have us, we have them in our minds and in our, in our prayers. 
Okay, we do have Community Legal with us, but um, bef before we get to Community Legal and we introduce them, I just want to thank our sponsors here at WOC Radio and the wonderful folks at Bob Wines, Camellia Garden and Nursery, who have been keeping things blooming in Ocala since 1952. They are located at 2610 Southeast 38th Street in beautiful Ocala. They can meet all your landscaping needs and uh, anything from a small plant to a large tree. If they plant the tree, they guarantee it. You can't beat that deal. If you can't pick it up, they'll deliver it. And if you're a veteran, they'll give you a 10% discount to boot. So see the folks at Bob Wines, Camellia Garden and Nursery. I'm going there this Saturday myself. And also, we would like to thank the wonderful folks of Ocala Ford. And I would want to remind you that the Ocala Ford dealers serve Gainesville, Leesburg, the Villages, and Bellevue. Um, these Ford dealerships offer new cars trucks used cars service and repair and if you're not willing to buy right yet you just want to try something out you can also try a lease so get down to your ford dealer and you know the the, the main one here in ocala is located at 2816 north pine avenue and just follow your nose to the smoke from the burger king right across the street <laughs> now we have miss bigelow with us uh, miss bigelow you want to go ahead and introduce yourself Hi, this is Christy Bagelow. I'm the Veterans Project Manager at Community Legal Services in Mid-Florida. Good morning. It's, thank you for being here, and it's good to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Um, uh, Hank tells me that um, there's some uh, new legislation and, and some new uh, information you have about um, being able to help veterans. Yes, yes. There is something I've noticed that's happening more and more often over the past year, year and a half, and that is reductions in VA disability ratings. Now, I know that's going to give everyone nightmares, <laughs> um, but I think it's important to get the word out there because what we usually hear about in the news is how hard it is to get your disability rating in the first place, how long it takes, how many years people have to struggle to get these benefits. What I am seeing now is the VA is sending delightful letters to veterans saying, we propose to reduce your rating. And there are some very quick deadlines associated with that. So I just want to give everyone an overview of that. Um, basically, if you get one of those awful letters from the VA saying they're proposing to reduce your rating, you have 30 days. That's only one month to ask for a personal hearing in order to stop that reduction. Now, I personally go with veterans to the regional office in St. Petersburg to represent them at these hearings. And all the hearings are unfortunately in St. Petersburg, which is not anywhere convenient to Ocala. But you've got 30 days to ask for that. If for some reason you miss that deadline, you still have 60 days to submit evidence and try to convince the VA not to reduce the rating. How would veterans contact you? Well, we have a helpline in Ocala. That's the best way to contact us. And, of course, through your radio show, if you come across a veteran who needs help in the next few days, you're always welcome to call me. You, you all have my personal number at the radio station. But the best way for veterans to get our services is to call our telephone helpline and have an intake done. The number is 352 629 Six two five seven, and make sure they let someone know that it is an emergency. If it's a VA rating reduction, it is an emergency, and we want to get to it quickly before that thirty days passes. Yeah, thirty days—that don't sound like much time. Um, could it's you uh, could you go ahead and repeat the name of your organization again, too, please? Yes, it's Community Legal Services in Mid Florida. We actually cover 12 counties in Central Florida, so we cover all the way from Ocala over to Volusia County and down to Osceola County. So in your area, we cover Marion, Hernando, Lake, um, Citrus, and Sumter. And I want to just take a minute to thank your organization because I'm, I'm active in the Veterans Court, and um, every time we have court, we have somebody from Community Legal there uh, to assist the veterans, you know, with their legal problems. Um, not the Veterans Court itself, but, you know, problems that may s spring from their legal problems. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about some other things you do, too? Yes. Generally, what we handle is VA disability appeals, um, discharge upgrades. Like I said, rating reductions are fairly new. 
but because we now have Equal Justice Works fellows, and Kelly Sullivan is the one who comes to Veterans Court most often from the Veterans Project, she's one of our fellows, and she's able to help with some child support modifications and driver's license issues and other issues that I haven't been able to handle by myself. So it's great to have wonderful people helping me at the Veterans Project. Has any been reason been given by the VA or, or the government why they're doing these reductions? You know, I find it interesting that we haven't heard about this in the news because I'm sure you've heard in the news that there's this national pushback against people being on Social Security disability. So there's really a push to get people off disability in general. But I find it curious that I haven't heard anything about that happening within the VA, but every veterans advocate I talk to has definitely seen an increase in these cases. Yeah, because unfortunately, uh, you, you know, a lot of uh, illnesses and, uh, and, and a lot of injuries just don't go away. Exactly. And, you know, sometimes when I talk to people about this, they say, oh, well, some people deserve to be reduced. I said, well, I'm sure some people do, but I haven't seen them yet. <laughs> the ones who are coming into my office, there's no evidence that they should be reduced. But it seems like the VA is just giving it a try. And if the veteran doesn't push back, then they're definitely going to take your money away pretty quickly. Now, is this something that they constantly do uh, to each individual veteran, or is there so many times a year they do it? I really don't know if there's a rhyme or reason. Um, we've, had, we've had cases all over the map. Sometimes when I talk to veteran service officers, they say, oh, well, the VA can reduce you unless you've been rated 20 years. Well, of course, you have the most protections if you've been rated 20 years, but none of the cases that I've gone to hearings on have been rated 20 years, and we still won all the hearings. I always request a hearing. The veteran and I go to the hearing, and so far, knock on wood, we've had 100% success when we go down there and say, VA, you have nothing to show that this veteran should be reduced. That is that is good news. Can we, can we get to hold on just one minute because we do have sure. to take a station break? The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. For today, some sunshine mixing with clouds. Watch out for a thunderstorm during the afternoon and evening hours. The high 88 to 92. Partly cloudy overnight, though 72 to 76. Times of clouds and sun tomorrow with a shower and thunderstorm or two around in the afternoon. The high 88 to 92. And for Saturday, clouds and some sun with a couple of thunderstorms mainly in the afternoon. The high 90 to 94. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. If you're looking for a whole bunch of new buy one, get one deals, then the place you've got to be this week is Bob Wines Camellia Gardens in Ocala. Take a listen to what's in store for you. Hybrid tea roses and many other roses, buy one, get one free. Gigantic watermelon red, lavender, and pink crepe myrtle, just $199.99, buy one, get one free, delivered and planted by Bob Wines Camellia Gardens. Big selection of fruit trees, buy one, get one free, plus gorgeous hibiscus also buy one get one free don't forget that fabulous truckload tree sale savings of 33 to 66 percent on hundreds of trees check this week's ad for all the specials summer store hours now monday through friday nine to three saturdays till two bob wines camellia gardens southeast 38th street ocala homegrown locally owned since 1952 all right 19 minutes after nine o'clock let's return to veterans news gary Yes, um, I had just fielded a call yesterday, Christy, uh, uh, from a World War II veteran spouse, and uh, he was in that situation, too. Um, what kind of uh, resources um, is available to people like, like, like the, some of the veterans that might be disabled, you know, that, that, that aren't able to even speak for themselves, um, you know, if they're, they're under a caregiver or something like that, can, um, can they still get help? Yes, and that's where I can come in. I can go to St. Petersburg by myself if I need to and do the hearing for the veteran. I mean, it's, it's a very informal hearing. From what I've found, the hearing officers have been very sympathetic um, because the burden is on the VA to show that a reduction is warranted. And like I said, in the cases I've had, the reduction has not been warranted at all. So and it, it looks like they're just almost doing an automatic thing, you know, just, just picking everybody, and, and if they don't catch it within the 30 days, then they lose what they have, huh? 
Right, exactly, because I've had anywhere from a, a young Iraq veteran with only a one-year rating in effect. She had a 100% rating. I was able to help her keep that rating. Um, Kelly Sullivan also helped a World War II veteran up in Ocala who had a reduction and got that reinstated. So it just seems to be all over the map. But the burden is on the VA, and I think that's what people are not understanding is that they have a really good chance to fight back against these that's good too because uh, you know, even up here uh, very recently there was a World War II veteran in the paper um, that you know yeah. and, and some of these World War II veterans you know we talk about long deployments you know some of them are gone six years uh, you know the, the duration right. of the war so uh, that's an awful right. thing and a lot of them can't speak for themselves a lot of them are confused and you know they really feel like their country um, let them down so, you know, to have advocates like yourself, um, you know, that's really a, a blessing, especially uh, not only to the young veterans, but uh, the older veterans, too. While, while we have you on the line, um, for somebody that might think that they have a disability, um, could you, uh, you know, especially the younger veterans just returning, I know they probably have to act quick, and I don't know how much time they have and whatnot. Could you actually walk them through the process, uh, tell them who they need to see first, what order they need to, need to do things? Because I'm, I'm sure when they get out of the military, they don't get briefed on this kind of thing. <laughs> right, that's what they all tell me. Um, so what I recommend for initial disability claims is that they go to their local veteran service officer to file that initial claim. I tell them, let's try the easy way first. Let's hope you can just get approved quickly through the veteran service office. So they would need to bring their recent medical records, their discharge papers, any awards they've received, and any information about their dependents, so wife, children, husband, children, um, to the veteran service office and they are the experts at walking them through the initial claims. Now if they get bad news and they're denied, that's when they should come to me because I help with appeals all the way up to the federal level. Now I noticed you know on, on some disabilities, especially you know the younger veterans uh, return and un unfortunately a lot of them you know they're missing a limb or they have a hole somewhere in their bodies or something like that or even possibly missing more than one limb. Uh, you know, and that, that's easy to see, uh, you know, when you talk about going for a disability. But then there's a lot of them that look perfectly fine, but, you know, in, in their minds, you know, the post-traumatic stress syndrome and stuff like that, um, you know, you can't see it. So, um, you know, how, how hard of an issue is that to, um, to get taken care of uh, for some kind of disability rating until, you know, they can get themselves together and be able to get back and go to work? It is very tough for the invisible wounds. Um, most of my cases do involve PTSD because they often get denied once, twice, three times. Um, and this goes for Vietnam veterans and the younger veterans. It's very difficult to get a PTSD rating, but that's what I'm here for, to really gather all the evidence together and make it obvious to the VA why they should grant the disability. And that is more helpful for those invisible wounds. Yeah, and it, this seems to be a, an increasing problem. You know, it, it seems like, um, you know, in the office, uh, you know, a day doesn't go by where I, I don't uh, talk to two or three people that either are definitely suffering, you know, from post-traumatic stress syndrome or um, or believe they are. And, um, you know, people that I know, of course, well, you know, I mean, it's, it's easy to see the marked difference in their personality and stuff. But, um, right. This, this is a this, this is a tough battle, and um, you know we thank uh, you and the folks at Community Legal, uh, you know, for being their champions because um, you know uh, somebody definitely needs to step up to the plate in this area because like like you called it invisible wounds, you know, and and they're suffering, you know, and I, I think what what is it like about twenty two veterans a day we lose to suicide. Right, and those are only the ones we know about. I have a feeling the number is even higher, and it's just. It's so tough because, like you said, you and I can see that they're really struggling from PTSD, but the VA takes its sweet time, you know, two or three years for an appeal. And that's just, that's really emotionally traumatic for a veteran to go through that cycle for so many years trying to get benefits. Definitely, and you know, and, and one suicide is, is too many, and, and yeah, the yeah, the bureaucracy, it'd be, it would be nice if, if we could do something about that, but um, you know, we thank God we got folks like yourself and Community Legal and these uh, county veteran service officers and agencies like the DAV and the American Legion and the VFW that, um, that know and, and, and care. 
Um, so the big thing we want to get out there to you veterans is that somebody does care. So, you know, don't hold it inside like so many of us Vietnam era veterans, you know, did, uh, didn't say anything to anybody and just kind of withdrew. Um, you know, let somebody know how you're feeling and, um, you know, let somebody like uh, Christy help you. Yes, and veteran service offices are a great resource because, you know, they're close by. Veterans may already be members of the DAV or VFW. So for these rating reduction cases, they can be absolutely essential in getting that appeal in on time, within the 30 days. And then if they want to come to me and have someone help them with the hearing, I'm happy to do that. Well, but I've been very thankful to VSOs for getting those appeals in on time. We appreciate that. And, and could you let people know, you know, from, from, from your own voice that um, – could, because, you know, most of the VSOs are from, you know, a county agency or something, that they definitely are advocates to the veteran. Uh, they're, you know, they're not part of the system, the, you know, the, the federal system. Right, exactly. And they will go the extra mile to help you get all the benefits you're entitled to. And then if, heaven forbid, you're not granted those benefits, then you can come to me for help with an appeal. And we are also not part of a government agency. We're not part of the VA. We're just a nonprofit legal aid law firm. And I forgot to mention the important thing. All of our services are free. So it's not often that you hear free and lawyer in the same sentence. Amen. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> but uh, you folks are great, and I can attest that from the Veterans Court. Could we get contact information, especially for Ocala, from you one more time before you yes. hang up? Yes, I'll give you the Ocala number is 352-629-6257. And then there's an 800 number in case that Ocala number is long distance for you. That's 800-363-2357. And I recommend calling early in the morning around 830 because it is a very busy line. A Again, lot of people need help. And when a veteran calls about how long does it take somebody to get back with them? It should just be a day or two. Well, that is fabulous. Christy, we want to thank you for your time, and uh, we hope to have you back on, on, on the show again in the future because this is an ongoing thing, and you've provided us with a lot of information. All right, and I'll be happy to send you my one page here about VA rating reductions just so you can share the word with veterans that you meet. Well, we sure appreciate that. All right, thanks for having me. Great. God bless you. Thanks for being here, and have a great day. And You too. Uh, Larry, how much time we got? We got about two minutes. We got about two minutes. Let me uh, go ahead, Sergeant Crow. You got something? Else? Oh yeah, I would like to remind everybody that there's another fundraiser coming up for the VFW Post Seven One Nine Three. This time it is a casino trip down to the Cape and out into the waters of the south of the of the uh, uh, well, you know where the waters are. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> It's going to be July the 25th, 2015, and it's $55 per person, and leaving for Mount Mirai Missionary Baptist Church's Annex at 8 a.m. down to the casino in Cape Canaveral. We're going to have a continental breakfast from 7 to 7.30, and uh, we're going to be loading up to leave at 8 o'clock promptly and on, sh and on time. So remember that all the funds that we raise is going to our uh, community center slash VFW Post home. So we're asking everybody to continue to support us because sort of, we still got a long way to go. Thank you very much for your time and most of all your donations. Now, if somebody doesn't gamble or something, can they still go along for the uh, ride, the I, scenery, I, and listen, the breakfast? I'm the, I'm the commander of this outfit. I don't gamble. <laughs> I, I go and have a good meal and enjoy the scenery, enjoy the ocean breeze, and watch everybody else gamble. <laughs> uh, but, you know, me personally, I, I don't I, because, you know, God has taken very good care of me, and so I don't yeah. need to, no, you know, extra. I don't, in other words, I don't gamble, but I go for the trip and go for the support. Well, that I, breakfast yeah, and that boat ride sounds awful good. I, I could use that about right now. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Um, yeah, so definitely support this, you know, and we definitely want to see that VFW post built soon. We've got ideas of how we could use it, you know, and it's you know, and it's for all the veterans. So, uh, yeah, definitely uh, support that, and um, let's get that building off the ground. I, I, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing it. It's close. It's to be the closest one to me. Well, veterans, um, we're going to be closing off now, and uh, we just want to say, uh, for, on behalf of Hank Whittier and, and Sergeant Crowley and myself and all the folks at Vets Helping Vets, God bless America. Amen. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian